Good, Chris. All good. Good to have you aboard. Now, I know you didn't love to catch pop-ups. How nervous were you when that ball was in the air with your Skripsky? Two on and two out in the bottom of the ninth at 5-4 and 78. Let me get your thoughts on that. Well, Go ahead. Well, you know, the, the story, I was with the Minnesota Twins in 1967, and we went to Boston, and all we had to do was win one or two games. And Yaz went crazy and beat us both games. So here I am uh, 11 years later. Same, uh, here comes Yaz up in the situation. I'm out there in the field going, no, nah, you're not going to do it to us, Yaz. Come on, pop it up, pop it up, pop it up. And then it went up, and I went, oh, God, not to me. <laughs> but it, it wasn't a major league pop-up. It was a jam shot, so I didn't have any problems with it. Yeah, you caught it on the shoulder, made that, uh, made the catch. You know, uh, that was really, um, I mean, that has to be the best game you've ever played in, Greg. And, of course, you ended up in a World Series of San Diego later. You made those great plays defensively behind Guidry later in that postseason against the Dodgers. I mean, you've played in a lot of huge games. But pound for pound, that was only 18, 19 years of age. So you can't go by me. You played forever. Pound for pound, that's probably the most intense baseball game you've ever been involved in, involved in that Monday in Boston. In, in the uh, game 163, I would think that's the most exciting game you've ever been a part of, correct? It, it was. It was a, you know, a, a win or go home game. And it's uh, the best thing that happened to us really was going up the next day and playing. We didn't have a day to, in between like they do today. Uh, we, went up, we, we lost in, at Yankee Stadium on Sunday afternoon and went right up to Boston and played uh, Monday afternoon. So we didn't really have time to, to get very nervous. We were nervous. I won't say we weren't, but we didn't have time to, to really uh, uh, get upset about it. Good point. Rick Waits beat the Yankees in game 162, 9-2, and the Red Sox beat, um, with behind Louis Tion, beat Toronto. That's where the tie was. And the Yankees, of course, that summer of 14 games out. If I asked you in late July with all the Reggie and Martin and Steinbrenner stuff, Greg, that in fact the Yankees would actually be in a playoff game, 163, you would have said I was nuts. That was a very rough summer that turned magical the last two months. Middle of the year, the Yankees looked dead. Thoughts on that for a sec. Go ahead. Well, you know, like you say, when we had the, we had a lot of controversy surround us between, you know, between Reggie and Thurman and Billy and George and all that, and everything was going kind of crazy. And finally, uh, George had had enough and let Billy go, and we got Bob Lemon in there. And Bob was about the easiest going guy you've ever played for, and he really settled things down and just let us play the game, and we just took off from there and. We actually made up those 14 games and then went two games up after that. So we actually, you know, like made up 16 games. But then the Red Sox, I think, won their last seven or eight games to catch us. So they it, was, did uh, three, it was a great right Three and a half you were up there, Greg. I mean, so you had to make really? up 17 and a, three and a half. And then the Red Sox won the eighth state. Did you think the Red Sox were left to die and dead when you swept them up in Fenway in the in the in the uh, in the October massacre in the uh, Boston massacre, do you think you had left the Red Sox for good when you won those four games in September? Well, we were pretty con we were pretty confident in our, in our ability after that because it was uh, they called it the Boston massacre. We went up there and beat them four straight games, and uh, I don't even think we hit the wall one time or any. I don't even know if we hit any home runs, but we just singled them to death, singled and doubled them. But, uh, yeah, they were, they looked like a lost team at the end of that series. So you have to give them a lot of credit for coming back and winning eight straight at the end. 100%. Uh, did the team get together Sunday night before the playoff game or the regular, the, uh, play in game? Did the team get together Sunday night in Boston when you got up there from the Cleveland loss? What'd the team do? Or did you get together? What'd you do on the Sunday night up in Boston that day? You know, when, when we lost the game in, in New York, uh, after the game, Bob Lemon got us together and talked to us and said, uh, hey, guys, just whatever you do after a ball game or before after a game, do that tonight. If you want to go out and have a couple of cocktails and, 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 and have a good meal and, and just just don't don't lock yourself in your room and, and and think yourself to death. He said, just go and pretend it's just another game. And he kind of he, Bob was a very relaxed person and he kind of helped relax us and got us uh, get a you had to get your mind off the game for a while, and he helped do that. Uh, what was your take, Greg, going in uh, with Gidry on short rest, three days, had won 25 games that year, against Torres, who was on the Yankees in 77? Did you like the matchup going into that Monday game? 
anytime Gidry is on the mound, I like the matchup. And uh, you know, we were and we were facing uh, Mike Torres, who's uh, he's still he's a good friend of mine still. And we, I cut on him. I say you you pitched just a two pennants in a row, one in seventy seven, one in seventy eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He uh, no, but Mike was tough that game. I mean, he you know he's shutting us down till till Bucky hit the home run, and then you know. It's, Boy, you never know what's going to happen after that because I knew we were going to – I was hoping we'd get a good game out of Gidry, and we did, and we got even a, a better game out of Gossage because he went like three and a third innings or four innings to, to get the save. 100%. That game is very symbolic and very representative there, Greg, of the season. Uh, you know, uh, like the regular season, they jump ahead. Like the regular season, you scored five unanswered runs to take a lead. And like the regular season, they came back to make it very interesting. That game is very, is very, it resembles a lot of how the regular season went. I think that's one reason why it's so fascinating. What's your take on that? Let me hear. Well, well, you're right about the way the momentum kept swinging to, to each team. And, and even in that game, it kept swinging. Uh, I mean, there was some fantastic uh, baseball played in that game. I mean, the playing Pinella made in right field to keep the runner from going from first to third, uh, who would have scored on a fly ball, and then no telling what would have happened then. But Lou made a great play, and and Goose just pumped it up a little harder to Yaz, which was he was a tough out. I mean, Yaz is one of the he's probably the best player I ever played against, and I could just I could just see him doing something in that last at bat. But Goose humped up and. Threw him an extra, extra fast fastball, and, and he jammed him, and he popped it up. Yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. Did you think the Buck fly ball? You think the Bucky fly ball was gone? Now, listen, he used Mickey Rivers' bat because he had been using that, no. and he hit a ball off his foot. Did you think he got enough of it when he hit it over the monster there in the top of the seventh inning? Uh, not really. No, no. <laughs> when Bucky hit the ball in the air, he usually. <laughs> Hardly ever went out of the ballpark, so we were we were stunned. I mean, we knew we saw from our dugout in third base. We saw the the angle of it. We knew it was going to be high off the wall, if anything. And then it just I think it might have scraped the paint on the other side, which was just just enough. Just enough with the three runs. And I'll tell you right now, you just have the great line about Reggie. The great thing about being a Yankee is I get a chance to see Reggie play every day. And the bad thing about the, being a Yankee, I get a chance to see Reggie play every day. That was one of the all-time classics. Yeah. But you saw the you saw the good Reggie there in the eighth inning. It was typical Reggie. You know, of the big moment never scared him. He hits the ball out of the ballpark against Bob Stanley at the left center field, which turned out to be a huge run top of the eighth. What do you remember about that? Go ahead. Yeah, I just remember it. Being a huge home run, a lot of people forget about that that home run that Reggie hit because everybody talks about Goose and and, and Mike catching a pop up and all that stuff. But but Reggie's home run was huge. Give us an extra run, and you know we needed that run. So uh, I mean everybody everybody played well that game. I mean just see you can't. I'm just so happy that nobody on either side uh, made an error to cost them the game, and they'd have to live with that the rest of their lives. But it was it was a well played game and. Obviously, one of the best games in history. Oh, no doubt about it. Now, the play that Greg was referring to, Panella, you know, kind of lost the ball in his lights on a base hit by Remy with Burleson in, the sun, in yeah. first base. In the sun, if the ball gets by him, Burleson might score, tie the game up, and if nothing else, go to third base where Rice was up next in a sacrifice fly in the eighth, which would have tied the game up at 5-5. And Nettle, and, uh, and, and Pinella made a great play earlier in the game on Fred Lynn when he cheated down the right field line off a Gidry slider and prevented that ball uh, from yeah. uh, causing lots of trouble. So, But that was a hell of a play by Pinella in the eighth inning, Greg. Give me some, you were at third base. You saw the whole thing. Give me some thoughts on that. Third, Go ahead. I was at third, and I knew, where the, I knew the sun was in his eyes just the way the – Sunset over over third base like it did, and so and little look lost out there when the ball was hit right at him, and then all of a sudden he just kind of stuck his glove out, and he must have seen it obviously at the last second, and and made a made a stab, and I just remember Burleson about two steps around second had to put the brakes on and go back, but uh, I mean it just it just one play after another, everybody just played a great game. 
and Gossage so many innings and relying on that fastball. Now, he gave up a couple of runs, but he came out in the seventh inning. No closer does that today. But, boy, he got those last few outs on uh, on Guts. And, of course, as you said with Sparky Lyle, from Cy Young to Cy Arnara, he was there in 77, and Gossage got the job done in 78, and he really gutted those last eight, nine outs out. Greg, give me some thoughts on that. Go ahead. I mean, uh, Bob Lemon had uh, a lot of confidence in Goose to, to – Leave him in that long in that situation when he had the he had Sparky in the bullpen who had won the Cy Young the year before. So you know I wouldn't have been surprised if he had brought Sparky in, but uh, you know Bob Lemon's a pitcher. He knew how Goose felt. He knew uh, he must have had confidence and he must have had a, a premonition that Goose was going to hump up on the ass like he did, and boy, he sure did. Uh, does a, how nervous does a team? Yeah, I, in your situation, winning runs on base. I think it was first and second in the ninth. Winning runs on base. I mean, you were a tremendous defensive third baseman. But even you, my God, the last thing you want is the ball hit to me. We're two outs That's in the ninth right. in this wonderful game. Does a, did you feel the 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 ascent? Does a great player sense that, or you are so good defensively, well, you want the ball hit to you in that situation? I mean, well, you usually do, but in that situation, you go. God, make an out, yes, but hit it to somebody else. You know, let somebody <laughs> let somebody else be the hero. But when he hit it to me, and I said, "Oh my God, not to me!" But you know, if it had been a major league pop up, a real sky, and I probably would have called for Bucky because I hated pop ups. But like right. I said, he did. He, he jammed him, and it wasn't a it wasn't an all time high pop up. So I was able to get over there and get under it, no problem. And he swung at the first pitch too, which people don't remember. He swung at that first pitch. Uh, you you won. Jubilation. I know George went to the Red Sox clubhouse. Uh, you had a feel for that team because it was such, and you beat him in '77 in a close pennant race too. And I hadn't won since '18. Was there any feelings for Remy, for Burleson, for Yaz, for Rice, Lynn? Did you have a good relationship with him, Greg? How about the feelings for the other side after you won that game? Well, I, well, I, you know, I didn't really have time to feel sorry for them. I mean, I have. Like I said, I just I was hoping somebody would not make an error to to you know make a make a, a lifetime uh, bad guy out of the guy. But but everybody played well. I mean, I yeah, you feel sorry for a team when they battle like they did. And I, I mean, if I don't think they would have felt sorry for us if we would have lost. So I didn't have a lot of. I mean, I've, I've uh, I'm, I'm friendly with all those guys now. So it's uh, the guys I see them at play golf every once in a while. When I was out in San Diego living, I used to play with Fred Lynn a few times. So, uh, and I played with Jim Rice. So we, you know, we don't really talk about the game that much, but uh, they were, they were good guys. I, I don't have any problem with them. And a lot of Hall of Famers in that, in that game. You know, Reggie's a Hall of Famer. Yaz is a Hall of Famer. Rice is a Hall of Famer. Fisk is a Hall of Famer. Catfish was on the Yankees. He's a Hall of Famer. Gossage is a Hall of Famer. Uh, Eckersley was on the Red Sox. He's a Hall of Famer. A lot of Hall of Famers played in that uh, game. Greg, thoughts on that? Go ahead. Uh, I never realized and stopped to think about how many Hall of Famers there were. But, yeah, there was – I mean, we were the best teams, and we we played all the way down to the extra game. So, it's uh, – you know, and I, I, I keep – I say the best team won, but, I mean, I, I would have had to take my hat off to them if they had to beat us too because because we were both really, really good teams. Uh, did you have a good relationship with Billy? And if you did, did you call him when that was over and say, Billy, you deserve some of this too? Because you had won five in a row when George brought Lemon in. So you had begun to turn it around. But what was your relationship with Billy when he was fired there in July, Greg? Uh, I was one of Billy's. Uh, he, he was a, I loved the guy. I mean, I was one of his, his uh, so-called boys when I played in uh, Minnesota. See, I played for Billy in AAA in Denver and then, he got the job in Minnesota and I went to Minnesota and I, you know, did well. Then Billy, of course, got fired after a year. So, and I was considered one of his boys. So they traded me same time. So I traded me to Cleveland, but uh, I loved Billy, but I didn't have a chance to call him. We didn't have cell phones in those days. And uh, so you you really didn't have a, I mean, I, I I appreciated and and loved everything Billy did for us. And I just, I think he, you know, I'm sure he got a nice cut from the team, but uh, if there would have been cell phones around, I would have given him a call. There you go. And momentum was important. You never look back. You know, you beat the, um, you know, you turn around and beat Kansas City in four games, and then you beat the Dodgers in six, uh, and it was three games to one, and you beat him in six 
in that World Series. So you felt, um, no, I, it wasn't three games when you won the last four games. You were down 2 0, and then you won four in a row. But, uh, right. you know, you kind of felt, you kind of felt that you were the winner of that game was going to win a championship. Did you feel that that day when you left Fenway well, that, boy, now no way we're going to be stopped now? Did you feel that? I, I was, yeah, I guess I did. It's been so darn long ago. But, you know, the, we played Sunday and, and New York and lost and played the next day in Boston and law and won. And then we got on a plane and played the next day in Kansas city. So we didn't have any, we didn't have any days off. We didn't have time to rest or anything. So you just, you know, as soon as one game was over, you kind of had to start thinking about the next game and, you know, it just kept going that way for the next couple of weeks. till the series was over. Uh, listen, you won some championships and you played with San Diego in 84 too. And you were in that game when Garvey, you know, beat Lee Smith. And that was yeah. a classic in Padre history, too. People don't remember that. They have never won a championship. But overall, you know, to me, Greg, as I said here at the top of this conversation, that is, that game, I, I've been watching baseball for 55 years. I can't think of a more intense ball game in my life than that game there in 78. And so you got to feel honored that you were part of it, I would think, all these years later. How about that? I do. You know, I played in... I played in I think 2,700 games in in the major leagues, and that that game stands out as, as much as anything. Just the pressure and the fact that you know I was proud of the fact that we got through the game without making a mistake, and you know it's something obviously I'll always remember, and I know the Yankee fans will always remember that game too. You know, it's funny you started with Yaz, Greg, which I I yeah, so six so uh, you see him 67. He's getting every big hit in America. He wins the Triple Crown. He's the, he's, the, he's the talk of the sport. Beats the Twins. The Twins went to Fenway, folks, in 67. with uh, They were tied, and they lost two games in a row, and the Red Sox won the pennant. Uh, so you were, I didn't realize you were on the roster then. So you saw Yaz be successful, and then you saw Yaz make the last out uh, 11 years later. That, that's quite a feeling with the great Yaskramski. How about that for a sec? Go ahead. Yeah, you know, in 67, I uh, I got called up from AA for the last month of the season, so I was just kind of there to take up a seat on the bench. But I know that we had to win one game there, and and, and what Boston did, they didn't even go with their best pitcher. I think uh, their best pitcher was Jim Longborg, but they went with uh, Santiago. And in in the game, they had to win, and they won it. And then they came back with their best pitcher the next day. And we had Dean Chance pitching for us and Jim Cott in the second game. So I liked our chances, but uh, yeah, it just put a wreck to us. Will you watch the game tonight with anticipation? Uh, yeah, I'll be rooting for the Yankees. Uh, for all, I mean, all, all the way. It's easy, you know. I. I I still wear a Boston Sucks t-shirt when I'm watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Greg, you did a great job. Congratulations. Looking forward. Great to have a nice conversation with you. Enjoy the ball game tonight. Thanks for coming on here today. I appreciate it very much. All right, dog. Thank you.